Hi, Rosie. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thank you for having me. So um, I know that you work with Orbit as a kind of community manager of some kind, and I'm really interested to hear about your role there and what Orbit is and what the Orbit model is and the tools that are provided by the by the Orbit software. Um, but before we get into all of that, I would be interested to hear from you about yourself and your own background and kind of how you came to be doing the work that you're doing now with Orbit and what the trajectory there was like for you. Yeah, sure. Thank you for having me. And thank you for the intro. Um, so uh, I, I've been I've been in tech for like twenty years now, um, and, and it's quite kind of funny to be able to say that. Um, I started like when I was twenty, like really young, um, and I managed to get a job. My, my husband actually managed to help me get a job as a software tester. Um, so and like I had no qualifications, no anything, you know, not, no experience. I just like managed to get my foot foot in the door for that, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was just like you know trying to trying to I guess find my way in life, and um, yeah. So I guess that that was like my first step into tech, and kind of along the way, I got involved in the local tech community in Brighton in the UK where where I live. And um, I saw people doing interesting things, like doing meetups, doing conferences, uh, kind of geeking out on things because they could and because they were excited by it. And I started going to some of those meetups and being basically like, you know, part part of the community. Um, and as I was doing that, I, I decided to do my own meetup as well and and it went well it was like a girl geek dinner meetup so it was a woman woman tech kind of focus meetup um and, and that went really well and, and that was like 2006 ish so i guess like five years into like my career so to speak in tech um so I, I, and like that meetup I did for a couple of years and it just went really well. It gave me like a real like confidence boost that actually, you know, this is something I enjoy doing, like bringing people together. I hadn't really thought about community building as an option. I didn't even know it existed. I, I didn't really even think about the meetup as community building, but um, I kind of started going down a rabbit hole of, what community was at that point. Um, I read a lot of Seth Godin at the time, who was like, I guess, one of the main people who kind of uh, inspired me by his, his writings. Um, and that was kind of like, you know, Seth Godin, he, he's marketing and community and business. So that was like my whole kind of mindset at the time. I was like trying to, trying to think with a different perspective on, on the world uh, instead of like the traditional, I guess, corporate, corporate kind of approach. Um, so yeah, I mean, I did the meetup for a couple of years, and then I was looking for excuses of how to use my interest in community. Um, along the way, I I co-founded a co-working space, um, and at around I I was doing that, and I was also started ministry of testing. Um, as, as also like an excuse to start a community, I was like, "Oh, I can do this," and you know, I found some tools online that I could use, and so kind of in sync, I did the co-working space for a couple of years and ministry of testing. Um, the co-working space again, you know, very kind of you know in line with like what what I was doing with the meetups. It was uh, I found it really fun, and I got you know I've made so many good friends out of it, um, and kind of like that in real life connection part was um I, I think you know something that is um probably so, something that we don't these days well you know it's impossible with covid at the moment um but just like the whole in real life stuff i think is super special to be able to facilitate like community that way um so yeah i mean the co-working space Great memories, uh, wrong uh, business partner. So I, you know, that was why that kind of came to an end. I decided to kind of walk away from it, but I fondly remember it. And I always think in the back of my mind, I'd love to start another one at some other point um, on my own or maybe with my husband. But 
I've never gotten around to it again. But um, love co-working. But yeah, and then also alongside that, I was building up Ministry of Testing, which was a community for software testers because I was, you know, I was a tester at the time, and I thought, oh, testers need community. And I just like kept working on it, and then uh, like you know, very kind of uh, side project e kind of thing. And um, three years in, I decided that it was it been around long enough to turn it into a business. So I thought, well, I, I want to turn it into business because it's like taking up so much of my time. I, you know, I have to make it, you know, practically, I need to make it work for me so that I can like make a living somehow um, and, and maybe not do testing as a day job. But like this idea of like building community for testers was something that I believe I believed I could do and something that I believe like testers needed. And yeah, so I, I built that up over 10 years, um, bootstrapped, and um, basically turned it into a seven-figure business. Um, and uh, yeah, so I guess like, you know, I, that's like, you know, an achievement within itself. Um, and along the way, I got, I got a bit bored of testing, so I decided that I didn't want to do it anymore. So I stepped back. But as I was stepping back, I I was uh, I'd hired like a CEO to take it over, who's um, who's a guy from from the community. Um, it wasn't like an overnight thing. I spent like a couple of years like working with him on various projects, and then kind of sharing everything I knew about about but you know running and building up the community. Um, but yeah, a couple of years ago, I stepped back properly. And he's been running it since. I still own that company or co-own it alongside the current uh, CEO and my husband. Um, but I very much uh, wanted to kind of focus more in on more community stuff. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do after after I left. Um, but I had the opportunity to lead the community at Indie Hackers. Uh, which is a community for founders. And I had done one of their early interviews when they had started up. Um, Indie Hackers was acquired quite early on by Stripe. Um, so I, I took up that opportunity kind of like as a new challenge, um, kind of testing myself. Can I, can I build community for someone else? Um, <laughs> Because yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's just me or just like you know. It's I think it's easy to think that sometimes you can, you know, only you know you don't know if you're you're really good at something until you do it for more than one project, I guess. Um, so partly it was a bit of a challenge for me to see whether I could um, take like everything that I learned, I've learned, or had learned from ministry of testing, the co-working space, the meetups and apply that to something that I hadn't built um, from scratch. Um, so, yeah, I spent, you know, that was good fun. I spent two years at Indie Hackers. Um, and then along the side, I was taking my interest of community building, and I was wanting to write about it. So I started Rosie Land, is it Rosie.land, as a place to kind of put my thoughts onto paper, so to speak. Um, about about community building, um, mostly because I felt like there was a, a big gap there that a lot of people weren't talking about certain things um, with respect to like um, community building and also like the, the overlap between community building and, and businesses or, you know, trying to like create sustainability through community. Um, and yeah, so... I've been I've been writing on Rosyland that's almost two years now, um, and I you know I really enjoy writing about community and for me that that was kind of a bit of a test whether <laughs> uh, I I felt like I wanted to kind of specialize in community as a career, um, kind of like you know really go deep like do research I, I felt like I'd spent a lot of like the, the previous 10 years kind of building community, but not necessarily spending time researching the best, you know, good practices or 
um, even like getting a bit like out of date with uh, the latest uh, people talking about it, writing about it. So like Rosyland was very much for me that focus of um, that excuse to like try to dive deep into community building. Um, so yeah, I spent two years kind of trying to kind of build up that habit of, of writing. And then, yeah, so, and, and then more recently, I, I've joined Orbit. I've been there about three months now as a community lead and their startup um, building software for helping people to build better communities. And it's based on something that they've created called the Orbit model. Great, great. Um, before we dive in more to Orbit, can you tell me about some of the themes of the writing that you did on Rosyland and uh, some of the things that you talked about there that you were articulating? Yeah. Um, so when I first when I started Rosyland, like I guess like the the approach that I like to take is like do research before you start writing. Um, <laughs> I think also part of it was like, uh, do I feel confident enough to kind of write about community? Do I know enough? Um, so before I started writing, I, I decided to curate a weekly newsletter of um, of interesting things I find related to community building. So I've been doing that uh, every week pretty much for almost two years. Um, I just this week sent issue 91 um so you know that's you know when i get to 100 i'll be pretty pleased and like having that having that consistency is important to me but um because i felt out of touch with like the community world for me it was a way to show up like uh, once a week i would show up for myself and read stuff and gather links and then share them so it was, for me, it was a way to kind of make sure that I was kind of learning about the, the space that I was entering and kind of validating to myself whether that was something that, that I wanted to kind of dive into even deeper. Um, so I did that for probably for about a year as well, or nine months before I started writing. Um, I found writing like harder to kind of develop that habit and I think, like you know, a lot a lot of people have this challenge of you know, yes, they would love to write, um, but actually, like showing up to write consistently uh, is kind of hard. Um, and I had I had tried a few times to do that um, and kind of failed. So, like the approach I took was right. Um, I'm gonna because like paid newsletters were kind of on on, on the up. So I was like, uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to start it as a paid newsletter to force me to write. Um, and it worked. So it forced me to show up every week, no, no matter what, to write about something. Um, but the themes that I would write about were, uh, I, I think, like, partly kind of tapping into my experience of building, like, a community-driven business, like, from scratch. Um, and, and trying to, I guess, like, I was trying to think of, my my thought processes of um, how how I approached building that community, um, and I guess thinking about it, I tap it a lot into just like being kind, um, like, you know, just building community with kindness, building a business with kindness, trying to. I, I think you know it's like I have this belief that uh, businesses. Uh, can thrive without being so focused on the traditional sales and marketing funnels. And I think, like, if businesses focus more on community um, as as a, as as kind of like the core mindset, the core foundation of of a business, then you know, I, I believe, and I've shown that businesses can thrive like that. Um, and yeah, so I was trying to, I guess, mostly tap into that and, and trying to tap into uh, helping people see that. Um, I started talking about co community flywheels. Um, 
what else? Uh, minimal or viable communities, kind of like, you know, how, how can, uh, you know, you create the smallest possible thing as, as a community. Um, also things like trying to think about what exactly is community and um, obviously like a lot of people like think of community as a tool, as this place, as this website or this forum that you go to. But actually, it's like it, there should be nothing to stop you building from community now because there's so many tools available. So you can build community like we're doing right now, for example. Um, you know, like conversations is a foundation of community. Uh, you can build community through email. Um, you know, simple tools can you, that you can build community with. And I think people kind of forget that they, you know, they they think that they need something big when when they don't fascinating fascinating um how did you come across orbit and find yourself in the role of uh community lead yeah the, the world's like interconnected isn't it it's like it's like a <laughs> everything leads onto you know something else um so yeah, Orbit came from me writing, basically. Um, that, that was like uh, the, the foundation of it. So I started writing this newsletter and, and, the, and then the paid newsletter. And Patrick, the one of the, there's two co-founders, so Patrick is one of the founders. He subscribed to my newsletter um, and he was like reading it um, and afterwards, I discovered he, he he had read. You know, he's probably one of the best subscribers. He had like almost read like every everything that I wrote and sent out. He had like opened it up and at least and and I assume read it. But um, yeah, he he was he was reading reading that, and you know, I guess like I got on T's radar, um, and then he he invited me onto a podcast that he was doing, uh, Developer Love, um, and. You know, we got chatting there. We had like an, a nice conversation, um, and then like I had come across the orbit model, and I had shared like the orbit model in in my my emails as well. So a, you know, there was this thing that like I guess we were becoming more more aware of each other, and um, yeah, I guess like o- over the time they had been working on orbit in the background, they had raised raised some money and then they had raised some more money and they were looking to hire a community person but hadn't actually found someone um and i think like he he had assumed that i was like you know dedicated to indie hackers i guess and and didn't want to like reach out at first he was you know a bit unsure about reaching out um and you know, I guess this is like the, the stars aligned kind of story that, that we share is that um, I was ready to leave Indie Hackers and I was kind of thinking about like how to like leave. Um, and then he he had reached and then, and then I was thinking of like, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next after Indie Hackers. I thought like, you know, I was going to go independent and that was kind of like the plan. Um, and... I was thinking of reaching out to to Orbit to like ask because I knew that he was hiring. So I I was like, oh, I like Orbit. I like what they're doing. I'd spoken to Patrick. I'd like the vibe. Um, I knew I had been in touch with another team member there, and she'd spoken positively about them as well. So I was like, oh, should I should I contact him or not? I was like, I could, but I'm not sure. Um, but then, like literally, like like the day after or even hours after I was like, you know, all, almost like tempted to like send an email to Patrick. He emailed me about the same, same thing. So I was like, Oh, interesting. <laughs> um, so yeah, we just got talking and I guess like, you know, you can use that as a sign of like, Oh, maybe, you know, you, you know, we both like um, the stars aligned kind of thing, where we were both like thinking about the same kind of things. But um, I think at the end of the day, is I, I like how they're thinking about community, um, and you know the, the the thought process behind the orbit model and 
how you know the, the different approach of the platform they're trying to build, and they built the model first, and then they built the software afterwards, and uh, generally they just seem like you know a good bunch of people trying to do good things. Um, so, so yeah, I guess you know that's that's the story behind that. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, so tell me about the Orbit model and how that was created and what, what, what goes into that. Yeah, so um, the model was created by Patrick and Josh, who are the, the founders of Orbit. Um, and I guess it's, you know, part of it is like trying to think about it's like trying to for me it's like practically trying to think about how 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 do you visualize community um in a way that um is helpful to to people on the team and i think like as as i had been like writing about community um i hadn't really gotten as far as like trying to build like my own thought process or model of community building. Um, but like the Orbit model seemed to like align with a lot of um, what what I was thinking. Um, so it uses, it uses things like, um, uh, I guess like, you know, one angle of it that kind of um, aligns with me is like the use of language that they use in it, I think is important. I, I hadn't really thought about it as deeply as, you know, until, until like I joined, joined the team, but it's like before, before Orbit model, like the terms that people use for community, um, especially I guess in the business world, it's, it's, it's very, met, it's, it's kind of, it's very like metric driven. It's t- very, uh, kind of re- return on investment kind of business speak is like engagement and clicks and you know all, all of that kind of language um and like when, when I think of the word engagement I kind of I start to feel icky about that as as like a community builder it's like it's, it's not about engagement it's like and then it's like you start to think well what can we use instead of engagement and um I start to think of other words that I feel more comfortable with um and I think of things like maybe connection is a better word than like engagement. Um, and we could say that, oh, the words don't matter that much, but actually like when we're talking about community, I think I think they do. Um, so in, in the Orbit model, they use words like love and gravity and reach. And I just think that's such, such a better way to speak about community. Um, and, um, and then, like, even even if like those terms aren't like fully defined yet about what they actually mean, or even if they're not fully defined in in the software yet, it's like always evolving at the moment. And it's still very much early days. Just just like the, the focus of thinking about right, what does love mean in community? How can how can we create more love? How can we practically create more love? And um, if we're thinking about gravity, it's like. Um, there's this idea around gravity is like how can we pull people in how can we get people from the outside in of the community into into the center of it so that you know the you, you know it's like um kind of like i guess like in business terms it might be advocates but really it's like you know people who care so deeply about the community and want to contribute what what they can and just like that that kind of language and approach to things in in a more kind of like a, at the same time, in a, in a kind of like systematic way of, right, there's there's this language that we use and there's these levels of people, kind of like one to four, um, and we can like try to approach the the people within this the community uh, differently because they're at different stages of the community. So, yeah, I guess for me, it's like, it's that kind of that, that kind of, um, if you if you go to orbitmodel.com, basically you can see the orbit model there, and um, it gives a nice visual rep- representation. Um, but you know, um, it just speaks to me, I guess, and and it helps. 
I guess it aligns with the fact that I like the language, but it also I I also like to take action. So it helps me think about how can I take action with this model in mind. Whereas if you look at other models, you know, to me, I'm I'm not sure if I've seen another model that kind of um, tries to think about community as a whole with like one kind of model. I guess, um, you know, there's lots of like. I guess models and frameworks out there that look at like very specific parts of a community, but not like as as a community as a whole. I think I might, you know, I could be wrong on that, but yeah. Hmm. So there's uh, a different language that comes with the orbit model that you really resonate with, and there's these specific terms like love and reach and gravity, and um, there's like sort of a visual model to it. Are there any other kind of important dimensions to what's shared in the model that are worth mentioning? Um, define dimensions. Uh, let me think. Um, I guess it's like, you know, the model is there, but it also tries to do it in a way that um, is data-driven as well, or has the potential to be data-driven. Um, and I guess, you know, that's likely, like, how, like, they drew the model as tech people and their understanding of community, but also, obviously, because they've been in tech, um, you know, and knowing how the, the, the founders' minds work, um, they were probably, you know, scheming behind, behind it all um, of how, tech can support this model as well as how can you use the powers of tech to to with this model in mind and like to bring like more more power to community so um yeah i guess like you know it's it's been thoughtful in, in that kind of process is uh the, the power of tech and data to to help build community great yeah well that seems like a like a good jumping off point to talk about the tool itself. Um, what is what is the tool and how is it built around the model and what kinds of things does it let you do to help build and steward community? Yeah, so um, at the moment, um, it, it kind of it kind of basically builds on the approach that um, one, one is like you, you, communities are generally distributed. So as much as like people want to have community on their own, just on their own platform, the reality is that your people are, are kind of everywhere. Um, so quite often people will have maybe like a Slack set up, they'll have an email list, they'll be on Twitter, um, stuff like that. Um, and the, the number of platforms that people are on is, you know, incre- you know is almost endless these days. Um, so, like, if if they attend an event on Zoom, you know that that can also be uh, classed as part of your community, right? Um, but like to date, um, it's been it's been very hard to like know anything outside of your own platform, whether you know what people are doing or or to have like a kind of centralized view of um, a member. So. Um, so if you have a Slack, for example, you you might be able to, you know, it, it's you can see like messages pop up from people on Slack, but it's you, you can't see a person's profile on Slack, so you can't see like the the ten last messages that they've sent on Slack, um, and then you, you wouldn't be able to see if they've like attended a Zoom event, for example, you know, during that period. So the, the idea of Orbit is that it can pull in that data to kind of, one, give you a view of their, their profile, their activity over uh, the course of their existence within the community. Um, and um, and then the other angle is it kind of can start to kind of uh, create reports on the community as a whole. So it's like who's like, for example, like who's the most active, um, or who's new, 
uh, uh, probably like you know very common situations um, or examples, um, and by tapping into that data, then the idea is you can you can start to like treat people differently based on um, what stage of the community uh, they're at. So in the orbit model, there's like different levels. There's levels one, two, three, and four. And so you would treat someone um, on each of those levels very differently. Um, so like level one, you know, being uh, new to um, uh, being at the center of the community, those would be people who have been around longer. Um, you know, you, you would treat them differently than someone who's at level four, who's who's very new to the community. So, yeah, and being able to get like quick quick access to that data. Uh, and get getting like relevant activity um is very powerful to to help you kind of build community and like i guess like you know do things like have have better conversations with people what are some specific ways you might treat people at these different levels differently yeah i mean you know if someone's like entering the community you can like put yourself in their shoes and you might think, oh, you know, they probably won't know as much about them, uh, about the community. So it could be things like, you know, I guess like the onboarding kind of stuff or the, you know, more introductory stuff. It's like maybe you could uh, reach out and say hello. Um, maybe you could invite them to an event. Uh, maybe, you know, you just, uh, um, you know, I, I guess like stuff like that is like it, it try to introduce them or try to, you know, even just like, host a conversation with them um, and um, then like I guess if you compare that to so- someone who's like more experienced they might you know um, have lots of experience and they might be um, seeking to like uh, contribute to the community they might want to speak an event they might want to contribute content they might want to help teach um, you know, I guess like all those kind of things. Uh, you know, and I guess like new people will ask a lot of questions. The people who have been around uh, longer will be able to answer them, uh, but maybe they, they won't have time to answer them. So maybe it's you know the people in the middle who would be more who would tend to maybe have availability to answer questions rather than people right at the center. Because I guess as as you get more experience, as you get older. Quite often, it's you know, uh, you get busier. I know I feel like that quite often. So it's like you know, hard to find the hard to find to justify the time to always be, you know, answering questions on the forum. But like, giving a talk, you know, might be more at people's levels in ways to con- contribute. Fascinating, fascinating, huh? Um... What's the like current state of this software? You said it's still early days. Like, where is it now, and where do you see it going? Yeah, um, I you know I, I think it has great potential. Um, obviously, I work there and I have my biases, so uh, take it off with a pinch of salt. But um, at the moment, it's it's got something like two thousand people who signed up to to use it. Um, and you know it's you know we we've kind of like released it in you know the the platform's there it's it's usable but we're not charging for it just yet so we're going to be like releasing like payment plans in the in the near future um but very much people are using it every day and we're very much like kind of working with people customers as closely as we can to to improve it and obviously like iron out any bugs but um, yeah, you know, I guess like uh, two thousand people interested isn't isn't a bad start. I have no idea how that compares to others, generally speaking, for you know software software projects. Um, so you know, it's like um, yeah, but I, I guess like generally, like the feedback is is positive. I think the challenge with any product like this is getting people to use it 
and making it useful for them. So that's kind of like um, where, you know, my mind is at and where a big reason like why I'm there orbit is to try to think of ways to educate people on community building, obviously with orbit in mind, but very much in a way of trying to kind of, um, what's the right word, just kind of, for me, it's like innovating on community building. So it's, you know, partly kind of expanding on the orbit model as as this, you know, framework that we can educate people on, but also just thinking about community in a new and different way and trying to think of how, how can how can we build better communities in the world today because it's not that we've done a bad job in the past. I think it's more that um, we did what we could with the resources that we had. And now that so many people are kind of interested in community, it's like how can we, uh, like in the best possible way, uh, take advantage of the current interest and belief that community can solve many problems and how can we use that interest and the resources kind of like available to us to really kind of um, explore what community means. And I think like with COVID, um, it's been really interesting because I think people in general have, have kind of really kind of experimented a lot with how to connect. And I, I think that's been great for communities. Um, even though it's like super overwhelming, um, I, there's definitely a lot more people connecting in more meaningful ways. I've definitely kind of had so many more conversations with people since COVID than I used to have before. Um, and it's it's done me good, I think. And even though we're not in real life, I think that, you know, it's... it's um, Super interesting for me. It's inspiring, and I'm thinking about this like every day. It's like, what does this, what does this mean? Uh, you know, as as a community builder. Hmm. Hmm. What are what are the kinds of things that you find yourself doing to uh, move orbit forward in that direction, as, so that people understand what it is and how to build community and and help them understand orbit in particular and so on. Yeah. Uh, good, good question. Um, at the moment, my focus, like I, I've not done a lot of specific orbit, orbit things. Um, so I'm definitely not out there to, you know, I'm not, I'm not a salesperson for orbit, um, and um, yeah, I, I wouldn't survive if I had to like pitch, pitch the product in that kind of way at all. Um, but I, I'm very much kind of like. The focus is like, you know, it's tough, I think, when you go in to a, a new company, a new community, a new project. It's like figuring out, well, if I'm to build community here, what, what does that community look like? And um, how, how do we actually go about it? And I, I, find, that, I find that really kind of interesting, I guess. Um, but... I guess like the approach that, that I'm taking at the moment is um, I'm going in assuming that I know nothing about this community, and I I want to I, I want to talk to people um, about about community. So that's kind of like the angle that I'm going in. So I want I want to have conversations with people. I want to talk about community building. I want to hear what's what's on their mind, and then I want to take all that back and and try my best to see how that applies to, to Orbit as, as a company, as a software product, and as the community, and I guess like the community industry as a whole. Because I, th I think for me, it's, like, it's not just about the Orbit model, it's also about, um, I guess, influencing the future of the Orbit model um, or, and community in general. You know about like what does good community mean in the future, um, and and that's you know that's my driver. It's like you know I I, I came on board, 
of it. And, and I, I, I said to Patrick, I said, I, I'm here to, to change the community industry. I, I think it needs to change. Um, and that's all I want to do. Um, and I don't know what that looks like, um, but that, that's, that's my main goal. So it's like everything that I look at now, I'm thinking, it's like, yeah, we've done that in the past like that, but does that mean we, that's how we have to do it going forward? So, oh, oh, we've you know we've used that word in the past. Does that mean that we need to keep talking about it like that way, or like you know other other ways to look at things? Um, are we right to you know what's the reason behind this? Um, and and I just think like it's very easy to kind of assume that um, things are right and the way they are, and just to you know go with that and. I guess, like, I'm trying to question everything um, in the best possible way. Uh, and also trying to move forward, but it's like, I think, you know, I, I mean, I guess, like, uh, as an example, I was talking to someone today about the Dunbar number, like the the 150, I don't know if you know that, uh, the 150 that uh, number that um, said that we can't, you know, once we reach 150 relationships or friends, uh, then you know that's kind of like our, our limit as human beings, and I was asked, "Is like you know what I thought of that?" And I was like, uh, I, 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 "And the only way I could answer was like, yeah, it kind of seems right, but at the same time, um, I'm I'm not gonna uh, believe in that completely until I've, you know, perhaps tried to uh, model it in my own in in my own way." Uh, or analyze in my own way, and and maybe maybe I can use the orbit model for that. Maybe I can like create my my a community with the orbit model and analyze the data and analyze like how many contacts I personally have and how many people I keep in touch with, and kind of see see how that models up to to the hundred and fifty. And maybe it will be hundred and fifty. Uh, maybe it won't. But I guess like the point that I'm trying to say is that I'm not going to like assume that that's that's what community means and that's what's what our limits are. Um, I'm very much going to try to think about well, you know, is it possible to increase that limit or maybe we should decrease it? Who knows? But yeah, the the point is just to I'm trying to keep an open mind. I'm curious, are you finding that? The 2,000 people that are using Orbit or the 2,000 projects or whatnot, are those, to, to what extent are those exclusively in tech or is Orbit as the tool exclusively useful for tech? Or are you finding that people outside of tech say, you know, I'm, I'm coming from nonprofit work myself or uh, various kinds of non commercial communities? So, are, 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 people in those groups finding that the model is useful and that they can use the tool or is it strictly limited to tech? It's definitely not strictly limited to tech. Um, I don't have data to hand um, mm -hmm. specifically on who's using it and who's not. Um, it's definitely like a tech bias just because of um, how the product has like, naturally grown. But there's also like people using it for all types of reasons. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are using it as like a personal community tool or personal CRM because um, you can like hook it into Twitter. Um, like I've, I've hooked it into Twitter and um, I use it from that perspective and I tag people. Um, and I know that like if I ask questions on Twitter, then many of the responses will kind of get pulled in to orbit as well. So it helps me build up a picture of how I'm, creating connections with, with my, uh, I guess, community on Twitter. But um, in theory, it, it, you know, I, I believe it can apply to, to anyone, right? It's like, um, or any type of company. We just uh, need to, you know, over time, I guess, we'll get better at, like, reaching out to other people and, like, developing kind of case studies and um, experiences of how everybody is using um, orbit as a tool um, 
and that's probably like our biggest challenge right now is that because you know there's there's no one set way of using it it's like you can pull data in from so many places you can you know manually keep on top of a lot of it as well so you know like i could go into orbit after this and tag on your profile that we've had a conversation together so i could tag your podcast and that po- that tag uh, would mean that um, we've, you know, spoken on a podcast together. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's like, how do you want to use it, basically, right? There's just so many different ways. And I, th- I think it's also easy, perhaps, to kind of think that if you accumulate a lot of data, then, you, or you, ha- you might, like, think that... Um, the, the tool will do the job for you, but it, it's not what the tool does. It's kind of more like how you decide to act on what what you, uh, the, 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 the data you have, right? How is the, you said that there is a slight bias towards tech right now. How is that showing up in the, in the product and the way that it's being used? Oh, good question. I don't know. Um, probably uh, the, the, f- the feedback, I guess. That we get from from customers, um, you know, we the team is generally kind of like on the case of listening to how people are using the product and feeding back suggestions into it. Um, so yeah, I guess I, I guess that's probably the the, the, the main aspect, and um, I guess like you know we're very much focused on integrating with lots of tools or lots of other platforms. So if people are kind of asking for integrations, then we'll, we'll most likely listen to the integrations that people are asking for over, um, you know, other things, I guess. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, part of the part of the reason I wanted to have this conversation is it wasn't necessarily uh, obvious to me from the outside the extent to which Orbit could be used for either nonprofit work or uh, just broadly speaking, non-commercial, non-tech community projects or connections or things like that? Yeah. I mean, I guess like if I was to think of like a, a non-profit, let's say they have a website, let's say you do events, um, let's say you have an email list, um, Let's say you're you're on Twitter, right? So you you could you know gather these different sources. So so you could first start out with a core list of people that you know are within your community. Uh, it doesn't matter how many there are. You could add them manually, or you could import a list. Um, and then let's say you do an event. Um, you could export uh, or or depending on what you use, and you could you, you could import that data in, into into um, orbit, and then you can start building up a, pic- a better picture of like who's in your community. And like the more events you have, let's say you do a weekly event, um, then over time you'll start to see who's shown up at those events and who's shown up the most, for example. Um, so you don't, you know, you don't need like much more than that to start building a, up a picture of who who your people are. Um, if you have conversations like this. Uh, you can start adding adding that to orbit. Um, for example, at the moment when I have conversations with people, I add a note, and then I, I add an activity, a note, and a tag, um, and then over time that builds up a picture of of the community and obviously who 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 I'm speaking to. So it's all those kind of things. It's you know I don't think it's you know to some extent like every community is it's very similar in. And the activities they do is like you attend events, you have conversations, um, you show up somewhere online, like a, a Slack or a Discord or a forum. Um, so you know that's not unique to tech. Um, and I guess like the trick with Orbit is just to like start pulling in the data that what wherever your community is active and and start building up a picture that kind of is manageable and, and makes makes sense to you. 
Definitely. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Huh. Um, what kinds of questions or challenges do you personally or Orbit as a whole have right now that you all are asking or investigating? Hmm. I need to think about that one. I think, you know, I guess like the main one is like being a, a new product um, and being a, like a generally kind of new to market type of product. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's like we don't know what the future holds, right? Um, it, it's hard to know. I was like, to some extent, we believe that like the the future like at the moment it's like people go to CRMs I guess as as business tools um and we kind of think like in the future that they they won't so much be going to those tools or those tools will only be a part of the picture and like a, a tool like Orbit um is a tool that like almost everyone will have in the future but currently most people don't and most people don't under understand completely what we're doing um so yeah i guess like part of it is like education part of it is like belief let's like uh, do we have the belief in 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 the future of the market that we're serving um all those kind of things it's like untapped territory to some extent you know it's kind of rethinking how we do things um so that's you know i guess huge and and i also think that's like partly why uh, the world of community in general is, is getting a lot of attention and there's a lot of money flying around in, in the startup world. Um, I'm not necessarily an expert on that. I'm just like this community person wanting to, you know, do good community things. And I understand business, but not, not necessarily, you know, it's the first time I've worked for a startup, basically. So I'm very kind of conscious about those things. Um, so yeah. Mm, fascinating. Huh. Is there anything that's, um, in the neighborhood of the different topics that we've talked about that, uh, you want to mention or hover on, go into a little bit more depth about? I mean, I guess like one angle, maybe, the, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, um, I'd, you know, I'd love to like think about like, um, so how 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 do you think this applies to like your background, or how how do like tools like this apply to your world or to your community? I mean, I guess like flipping it back onto you, if I was to ask oh, sure. you, um, like your experience of, of community. Um, partly it's like what, what, how do you feel like the mindset of the orbit model fits in and how do you feel about community right now especially like with COVID mm-hmm. right um, well there's a few different angles um, mm, it's hard to discern all this because there's so many different angles. I mean, one angle is I've been doing nonprofit work for the last few years and uh, in two different nonprofits and building communities, an important part of those. And, uh, you know, having people that are engaging with the various services or the programs and then uh, ensuring that there's funding coming in and uh, that there's benefit overall and that there's healthy connections between people. So that's one angle. Um, you know, I'm also, so I don't know what word you use, but some kind of like independent creator, business person, creator type thing at this point. And community is a big part of that, of like my network and who I'm connected to. And there's a lot of different facets of like friends or collaborators or people that I'm just interested in learning more about, or like things that I'm aware of. And, um, there's a lot of different, as you said, there's like this whole explosion of different channels and methods and ways of being connected to people. And, um, 
that's been fascinating to watch if a little bit overwhelming, as you said. And um, yeah, so that's one angle. And then uh, I think just an awareness that whatever goal you have in the world or whatever your vision is uh, for the way that you want to contribute or be of benefit that community and healthy connections and abundant connections are critical infrastructure for the success of whatever that vision is. And so, you know, if you're starting a company, you need to have customers and investors. And if you're starting a nonprofit, you need to have supporters and funders and people that are actually attending your programs and services and things like that. And if you um, want to be like an artist in the world, then you need people that support you and people that, you know, enjoy what you're doing. And, uh, you know, if you want friends, then you need people just to have friends. And uh, uh, we, we sort of, whatever it is that you want to do, that you want to contribute or learn or grow, community is an integral part of that. And I've been aware of that for a long time. And in some ways, perplexed by different social dynamics of, like, I've never felt very fluid with understanding social dynamics or how they work or what's happening. And certainly in person, but also online, I often have the sense of like, I'm not sure I actually understand what's happening here. And there seems to be more than meets the eye of like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I'm at this point, endlessly fascinated by online social dynamics, like things that I see on Twitter, for example, or private group chats of like, what's going on here? And the, the specific mechanisms of interaction make for some really interesting emergent properties. And um, uh, that's something that I'm watching and paying close attention to of like trying to make sense of different things that I see. And uh, yeah, so from a lot of different angles of my life, like professionally, personally, different sub areas of that, like community is an important role for thriving as a person, but also just in terms of interacting with the world at large and being of benefit. So that's, that's part of where I'm coming from, I'd say. Yeah. And I guess like going on that topic is like, you know, I, part of me like loves community. Right. Um, and the other part is like, you know, I, I feel so grateful that I can like make a living from doing this kind of stuff. But at the same time, I'm like, um, sometimes, you know, I do worry that like, is that I'm excited about all this extra attention around community, but at the same time, it's like, will it become such a focus that people like use it in the wrong kind of way? Um, but at the same time, it's like, well, we need community and it's been ignored for so long. Um, and I guess like, like you say, is like sometimes you can feel so insecure or unsure about the world around you especially as it's like changing so fast. Um, I know I know that I, I love instigating stuff because it almost puts me in a comfortable position of a bit, a bit of control. Whereas if I join a community or an event that I'm not so familiar about or with, then um, I'm definitely, I definitely don't feel as confident as I normally would if I was starting it. Um, so I guess like there's all these different dynamics that are involved with community that are interesting um, and, and powerful, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I love, I guess, try, trying to understand all, all, these, all these little things. That, and I think almost like it's these little things that get, get ignored in community that we can try to like, summarize things or even like trying to put things into I guess like the orbit model it's like how how deep can we go to understand all these little things that make community really strong um tactical things like you know asking ourselves why is it for example that you don't understand what's going on is there, is there a way to like solve that is there a way to for us as humans to get better at that to understand, you know, read the room better, um, or is or is that just like, you know, I guess part of the way that things are because we're so global, um, and people grow up in so many different ways. 
different languages, different ways of speaking. Um, you know, my, my kids very much talk. Um, I've got teenagers, so or even my 10-year-old is like already picking up lots, lots of stuff uh, on how to communicate. And like, um, yeah, I guess like he, he messages me a lot through, or at least or all my boys, 10, 16 and 17, it's like all through Discord. Um, and I guess through memes <laughs> as well. So it's like, yeah, I, I asked them, I asked my teenager a lot about memes. It's like, what's his understanding of memes? And, you know, he, he loves memes and he, he studies that, you know, he, he just like, you know, um, you know, I asked him, I was like, if I wanted to create a meme, you know, how, how would you go about creating it? He was like, you do not just go and create a meme. It just, you know, that's not the way it works. You can't like <laughs> uh, force a meme <laughs> kind of thing. You know, but you know he's he's got a different mindset. Um, it's not right. It's not wrong. It's just you know the mindset that he has and what he's grown up with is very much different from what I've grown up with. Um, and he doesn't understand my my lingo, right? As yeah, you know, just like I don't understand his as much. Um, so yeah, I guess that's interesting culturally, or even you know age age de- demographics. Um, I, and I guess that's the challenge of community. Community is not a model. It's not. It's not a, a tool, right? So it's like there's so many touching parts of what contributes to what community is. Um, and I guess that for me is a challenge. Is like the more the more I look into community, I start to see that I know less. Which is a classic saying is that you know the more the more you study something the the less the, the less you know right but I'm definitely feeling that as I like I could go into so many like sub subsections of community that isn't necessarily called community but it's definitely like can be seen as uh, beneficial to understand how communities work. Fascinating. Yeah, all that's fascinating. It just reminds me of a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of the different social dynamics that I've seen of like, yeah, age is one of them or like um, different like socioeconomic factors or like how much people are aware of different um, norms or implicit behaviors or things like that where, um yeah, you you can have really really close connections with people in certain venues or contexts, or just like awkward dynamics or like bad dynamics where things go really poorly in different ways. And I'm always trying to move things towards uh, you know away from bad stuff and towards good stuff, but it's hard. And there's so many different places and settings and norms. So I think that's a big part of the fascination as well as like just social dynamics. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Rosie. It's been delightful to meet you and to hear more about you and to hear about what Orbit's up to. And I so appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.